50 to 60% of men wear their fragrances wrong, and usually men buy wrong fragrances, which burns a hole in their pocket. So, gents, I am here with the ultimate guide to getting you your perfect fragrance. Now, really quick, let's talk concentrations. Understand that Eau Fresh, 1 to 3%, Eau de Cologne, EDC, 2 to 4%, Eau de Toilette. This is one of the more common options we see out there for guys, 5 to 15%. And I'm talking about the fragrance oil, the concentration, the Eau de Parfum, 15 to 20%. And then we've got the Parfum at about 20 to 30%. So, first up, let's get our terminology down. I want to talk about the different types of fragrances you're going to see out there and some of the key notes. The first fragrance type we're going to talk about are aquatics. Now, you can't squeeze smell out of the the ocean. But what you can do is mimic it. And that's what these fragrances are meant to do. Now, most fragrances in this category are going to label sea notes, ocean notes, salt notes, aquatic notes. But basically, what they're talking about is that they contain calone. And calone's in about 95% of aquatic fragrances. And it basically mimics the smell of the ocean. Next up, we've got florals. And when guys think of florals, they think of a feminine scent. But guys, it's not just all about roses. And believe me, there's many masculine roses. But jasmine and rose are two of the dominant ones but also violet leaf, which can be a very strong masculine smell. Next up, we've got oriental fragrances. These are going to have particular notes that are going to be stronger, deeper, longer lasting, patchouli, vanilla, amber. Now, spicy fragrances fall under oriental and they are going to have like Sichuan pepper, but they're also going to have smoke and incense like smells. These are fragrances that can tickle the nose. Next up, let's talk about leather fragrances. So, when I mentioned violet leaf, that actually can smell a lot like leather when mixed with the right fragrances, maybe a little bit of birch. This is something that's very strong, very masculine. And a lot of guys like this. Next up, we've got gourmands. And these type of fragrances, as the name implies, smell like different types of food, good food, food you want to get close to. Let's just say when you wear or gourmand, the right one. You smell like apple brandy. Maybe you smell like chocolate. This is something that draws in the ladies. Next up, we've got Chypris. And as the name implies, if you know your Latin, this goes back actually to the Romans. And these are going to be more some of the most versatile, some of the ones that you can actually dress up, dress down. But we're talking smells like oak moss, labdanum, and bergamot. Next up, we've got fougeres. And this comes from the word fern, but the dominant note here is going to be lavender. We're also going to see mixed in with a bit of oak moss and leather. These are very versatile versatile fragrances for a man who can keep his cool. Next up, we've got citrus fragrances. One of the most common notes we're going to see out there. We see it at the top because it just dissipates really quick, but citrus fragrances smell clean and are easy for men to wear. And last but not least, the masculine wood fragrances. And there are so many different types of woods out there from oud, to sandalwood. You're going to get all different types of smells, and we oftentimes see these built into a fragrance's base. Seriously, gents, there are right and wrong ways to wear fragrances. So, here is the ultimate guide to how to wear your fragrance properly. So, the first mistake most people make when applying a fragrance is they rub it in. Now, I get why people do this. Maybe they're testing a fragrance. They want to put it on various parts of the body, but they don't want to put too much on. They want to spread it out. And to be transparent, personally, I did this for years. The problem, though, is when you're rubbing in a fragrance, you're mixing the oils on your skin with the oils in the fragrance, and you're not allowing the fragrance to dissipate naturally. So, why is this an issue? Well, let's take the classic Dior fragrance, Eau Sauvage, made by the perfumer Runitza, masterpiece right here. He designed this in a way so that you would smell the top notes, the middle notes, and the base notes in that order. When you rub the fragrance, you're basically mixing up the notes. I mean, think about it if it was a piece of music. It definitely wouldn't sound the same, right? Now, some of you guys are saying, oh, that's a relatively linear fragrance. So, let's take a more multidimensional fragrance. And by the way, a linear fragrance smells the same from the beginning to the end. But when we're talking about multidimensional fragrances, these are ones that are going to have a top, a very clear middle, a very clear base. And this is naturally as the molecules basically, as they're, you know, they're moving off and you're starting to pick them up. This is something with black orchid you can definitely pick up. A complex, beautiful fragrance that costs hundreds of dollars. If you're going to spend good money on a fragrance, don't you want to enjoy it? The way that the artist put it together, they wanted to present it to you. You've got the truffle, you've got the Mexican chocolate, the patchouli. Ooh, just yeah, beautiful fragrance. So, the second mistake you want to avoid making when wearing a fragrance is the mist cloud. Now, if you're in a low gravity situation and you've got a clone fragrance and yeah, you have a lot that you're okay wasting, yeah, you can, I guess if that's your habit, go for it. But I think for most of us, especially again, if you're spending a lot of money on a great fragrance, you don't want to do the mist cloud because more than half of that stuff does not end up on you. Instead, it ends up on the floor and it's just a big waste. Now, specifically, what are my rules for applying fragrance? Well, first up, I apply it in the morning right out of the shower. I like to apply it on a clean body. I know some people use fragrance to cover up their smell. I do think someone should shower daily. 
That being said, I usually wait about five to 10 minutes after getting out of the shower. This is just natural for me. I've got my routine. I'm going to dry off. I'm going to usually shave. I'm going to apply lotions, all things like that. And then I apply my fragrance again, usually after about 10 minutes. Now, being a bit more specific, let's talk about distance from the skin when you spray. On average, three to six inches, but this depends on the atomizer. The atomizer is this device right here at the top, and it takes the fragrance and it takes it and pushes it into a mist form. You're going to find on higher end bottles, companies like Dior, they have amazing atomizers. They spend a lot of money on this and you could be six inches away and this thing is still going to spray evenly on the body. Cheaper atomizers from low cost manufacturers, you'll find sometimes you got to be closer to three inches because they spray really wide and they are inconsistent. And you want to again, make sure that most of this fragrance is going where you intend it to go. Now, you're going to find some old school fragrances. These don't even use atomizers. These are going to be more of the splash variety. In general, these are going to have a weaker concentration, but don't let that fool you and be careful with this because you can easily put on too much. I find the best way to apply this is simply to hold it onto the hand, turn the fragrance over, and then just dab it on a little bit by bit. You can keep adding more. Seriously, you want to be careful with splashing because as you can see right here, I am splashing it all over the place. It easily comes out and yet yeah, now my office smells like English leather. Now, I mentioned concentration. Let me explain that really quick. And by the way, there are no standards. Standards. So, this is a generalization here. Now, gents, if you want to grab this fragrance and you want to get the best deal on the web, down in the description of today's video, I'm linking over to Max Aroma. I've got a discount code for you. I've got an affiliate link, so I will make money if you use that link. But Max Aroma has been kind enough to sponsor this video, so I thank them. And they've got a great selection of fragrances. I've been picking up dozens of fragrances over at Max Aroma, and this has actually been for years. And so I was very happy to get this deal with them. And to point out that these guys, what I love is their shipping. And if you're looking for a sample and you don't want to sign up for a subscription, they've got five mil samples of some of the most popular fragrances out there. But in any case, if you're looking for any of the fragrances I talked about in today's video, go over to Max Aroma and find the fragrances you are looking for to smell good, to smell amazing. The next mistake I see a lot of guys make is that they blindly use a fragrance without first having tested it. And I know this because I made this mistake with tobacco vanilla. I was in Lenox Mall with Aaron Marino and we're having a great time. And I'm like, I'm going to go try a whole bunch of fragrances. I was just starting my journey. I put on some tobacco vanilla, actually quite a bit of tobacco vanilla. We were driving around in his car. He made me stop. He's like, you got to get out and wash some of that stuff off. It was way too powerful. I mean, I probably sprayed on like five times because, you know, it was free. I was just a sample. Guys, test drive it before you actually commit to a full bottle or wearing it in public. And you can also get the exact opposite. Like right here, Milsim Imperial by Creed. I absolutely love this fragrance. Beautiful. But I could spray this on 15 times and it's maybe going to last three to four hours and I'm going to get maybe a foot of projection. So, there are some great fragrances out there that are incredible, smell amazing, very expensive, but uh, yeah, you may not get much projection or much uh, push off them at all. And that leads to my next basic rule, which is less is more. I like to be discovered, not announced when I walk into a room. Even if I've got one of my favorite fragrances right here, PDMs, Carla, I absolutely love this during the winter, but I have made the mistake of putting on too much. And guess what? When you put on too much, you overwhelm people, especially if they're stuck in a car with you. If you're going to be flying on an airplane, I mean, you got to think of others. If you work in an office environment and there is a no scent policy, which by the way is stupid because everything has scents. I mean, literally you can't walk in. Your body naturally has a scent. That being said, I get where they're coming from. They don't want, you know, to give people migraines and you got to be careful of putting on too much. For me, me in general, I find that one to three sprays in the chest area, if I'm at all concerned, if it's a new fragrance, that is the most I'm putting on. And again, this is in the chest area. I'm putting clothing over it. So, that's even helping to mask it. And I like enough though for it to last. Sometimes one spray though. Right here, Carlisle, I can get away with one, maybe two sprays of this because the atomizer is good and it's a strong fragrance. Aqua Di Gio, the new EDP right here. This maybe five sprays, especially during the summer. It's going to project a bit more. Usually, I'm wearing short sleeve shirts. I find that I absolutely love this one. But again, if I'm going into an interview, 
maybe one to two sprays in the chest area, and that is it. Now, specifically, where to apply on the body. I know I've talked about spraying in the chest area multiple times. For me, that's my go-to area. If I want to project a bit more, I'll spray once on each wrist, maybe two times on the chest, so a total of four sprays. If I'm going with, you know, Sauvage Elixir right here, which is really strong, one spray in the chest, half a spray on each of the wrists. Again, you got to know what you're putting on, have practice wearing this. Other areas, the back of the neck. This is really great if you want to leave a trail, basically a sillage. Sillage is uh, basically the scent trail that you leave. Projection is how it pushes off. So, sillage is really nice if you're going to be at a bar, if you're going to be at an event, and you want women turning their heads saying, wow, that guy smells amazing. That back of the neck is great. Also, in the hair, I know some people are concerned about it drying out the hair. I feel this is relatively small, and the hair just does a great job of holding the smell. If you're wearing short sleeve shirts, and you're again, you're putting on a bit more, it's a relatively weak fragrance. I find on the arms as well is great. So, again, just right there, if you really like the fragrance, if it's relatively weak, and you're going to be, you know, just simply wearing it for yourself, you could easily put on 10 sprays. Now, Again, that's probably too much for the vast majority of people, so stick with the first rule, better to be discovered than announced, maybe one to two sprays in the chest area. But what about clothing? So, I get this question a lot, and I understand why you need to be careful, because you don't want to stain your clothing, especially if the fragrance, a lot of them have colors added to them. They will, you know, for a white shirt, they may leave a slight discoloration. Go ahead and test it out, but if you don't want this to touch your skin, and I get some people don't want that, and you want the fragrance to last longer, then consider spraying on your clothing. And this is a great option. Again, same areas, chest, back of the neck. Uh, if you're wearing a suit, you could spray it right on the wrist areas of the suit, maybe even on the arm in the chest area, even the back shoulder area. All of this, again, especially if you want to leave you know, that intoxicating sillage trail, get back to those early rules, understand what you're putting on and how strong it is. Now, gents, if you've ever worn a beautiful fragrance and nobody gave you a compliment, yeah, come on. In solidarity, smash that like button. Seriously, guys, when you engage with that like button, it lets the YouTube gods know that, hey, this video is worth watching, and hopefully some more guys will find this video so that the world will start to smell better. Wouldn't that be a good thing? Oh, and if I missed anything in today's video, let me know in the comments below. You guys know I love hearing from you. Now, when applying fragrances, what about rules in the office? I talked about that lightly, but for me, the key here is making sure it's a fragrance that is versatile, one that isn't going to have a lot of pepper in it. I love Victor Rolf Spice Bomb Extreme. This is an amazing clubbing fragrance when you want to get recognized, but wearing it into the office, probably a little bit too much. Or do you want like animalistic notes in it? Probably not in the office. High sex appeal. And to just beautiful by Chanel. Not something I'm going to wear into the office. However, Prada, this is a powdery fragrance right here. This is their own. This fragrance is a masterpiece, good quality ingredients, two sprays in the chest area, and it's going to stay close, perfect for the office. And that's what you're looking for is a fragrance that's not going to offend, maybe a light floral, bit of citrus in it, something that's clean, something that, yeah, I mean, unless I guess you want your secretary to jump on you, then uh, definitely, yeah, one of that one right there. Now, another mistake I see a lot of guys making when it comes to fragrance is that they don't choose their own fragrance. They get something as a gift and they wear it. They actually don't like it that much. You've got to trust that you can actually identify scents and fragrances that work with your body. This is actually, I've got data on this. I've read the research. Men naturally can pick up what's going to amplify, what's going to work with their natural scent. So, trust yourself and don't trust scent strips. Yes, they're nice, they're convenient, they make it easy, but you actually need to put it on your skin and see how it reacts. I like it when a guy tries one fragrance, he gets a sample, or maybe he goes into a duty-free, tries a one on. Don't try, you know, three on. I've done this, it just doesn't work. And really, when it comes down to it, even if you're using sampling, uh, you know, the, the sticks and stuff like that, they really, once it goes beyond three, you can't tell the difference. Your nose basically is overwhelmed. And I know people talk about, oh, just smell some coffee or, you know, those coffee beans. That is not proven. That That is a bunch of bull. That stuff does not work. It was, there's a whole story behind it, you know, where that came from. Point being is trust your own nose and find something that you absolutely love, and then you're going to have what could be a signature scent, maybe something for the season. Let's talk about that. So, when applying fragrances, is there one that you should apply during the summer, winter, fall, spring? Okay, so all this pertains to basically 
temperature, and feelings that certain fragrances evoke. So right here, I've got, again, the classic Eau Sauvage. This is going to be a citrus light, fresh, old school fragrance. Definitely one that, you know, Elaine Delon or somebody like that would be pulling this thing off. Your grandfather probably wore this. And I think that the modern men could wear this and smell great. Just an amazing fragrance. But this is more geared towards brighter summer, hotter temperatures, just because it's lighter. It's the citrus, the florals, uh, maybe some of the aromatic notes in this. Next up, Giorgio Omai. Stronger with you intensely. This one right here is perfect for winter. Why? It's going to be deeper, richer, sweeter, heavier. Just think about that. During the winter, you want something that is going to kind of wrap around you like a hug. That's exactly what these heavier, deeper fragrances, but there are other characteristics because if you're going out to a club during the summer, it's relatively cool. This would be a great fragrance to wear. Why? Because the ladies in general love fragrances that are sweeter that are deeper, that are richer. Now, what about wearing unisex fragrance or women's fragrances? Guys, there is no sex to a fragrance. This is something marketers made up so you can wear anything that you think smells great. In fact, I just did a video talking about baseball players and one of them, he was wearing Victoria's Secret and he had great, I mean, it was basically a performance enhancer form. So, uh, yeah, so I tried Velvet Orchid, a little bit too sweet for me. And in general, that's what you're going to find with a lot of women's fragrances. They're just too sweet for most men's tastes. That being said, Narciso uh, Rodriguez right here, Oud Musk. This is a unisex fragrance that a lot of women were doing reviews on and I saw all of them were like, it's too masculine, too strong for me. Just not something, it doesn't have enough sweetness. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try this and lo and behold, this thing is absolutely beautiful and I love it because if you're looking for a unique fragrance that no one else, no other guy's going to be wearing, then you bring in something unisex, it really sets you apart. Now, the next question is, should you wear fragrance daily? My answer is yes. I love wearing fragrances because they enhance my mood, they make me feel better about myself. I'm wearing them for me, but I get it. Sometimes fragrances are expensive and you're like, okay, special occasions. In that case, I would say, you know what? Are you going with something popular? Does it have a clone a version that you could wear this, you know, Monday through Saturday and then Sundays when you're heading to church, then wear your best or maybe build up a collection, have four fragrances that you rotate through. At the end of the day, a hundred mil bottle, you're going to get like 1400 sprays. So, even if you're putting this on, you know, three to four sprays a day, that's going to give you a full year of use, which I would rather go through and continue to use these things than not use them at all. And that brings up the important question, are fragrances actually dangerous? Can you overuse them? So, I haven't heard of anyone actually overdosing on fragrances, but I will say, hey, this is hitting your skin. You know, with anything, I mean, water, you can drown. I mean, you can get too much water here. It is something that I say, don't go overboard. Don't go in excess. And if you're worried at all, just simply spray on your clothing, put a little bit less on. But like I said, everything has a smell. And for me, I want to smell good. Now, what about reapplying fragrances? So, the first rule here is, have you just gone nose blind? That fragrance you put on three hours ago, I know you can't smell it now, but go for a walk come back in and smell yourself. And if you can still smell it, it's just simply you became nose blind. This is a very natural thing that our body does so that after, you know, even like 10 to 15 minutes, we become accustomed to a smell so that we're able to pick up other smells. That being said, you know, having a 200 ml bottle of a fragrance is not something that's easy to carry around, especially if you're traveling, going to airport security. I love travel atomizers. In fact, I love them so much. I ended up buying like a thousand of them with my logo and stuff. I'm still trying to figure out how to ship these out to some of you guys that are awesome commenters down below. Yeah, you know, this right here really solves the problem. They're so easy to use. As you can see, they've got a male, a female, and you simply put it together. You make love, you make it happen, and boom, you've got something that can travel and you can spray throughout the day. Now, if that's too much work for you, just buy a fragrance in a 50 ml bottle. You're going to pay more per ounce than if you buy bigger bottles, but these are easy to slip into a pocket or simply travel with, and you can pick up a couple of them and boom, problem solved. Now, what about layering fragrances? So, this gets a lot more complex, and I don't recommend it for the guy just starting off, but in general, if you were a light, clean, crisp fragrance in the morning, by afternoon time, most likely you can wear a heavier, deeper, darker fragrance. And this makes sense because if you, you know, you wear something to work and then you want something that you can go out and play, you know, to the bars later on, but don't go the opposite because the darker, heavier ones last longer and they can still overpower these lighter fragrances even if you apply them, you know, eight hours after you applied the heavier one. Now, what about layering with moisturizers and conditioners? So, if you're using a shampoo, if you're using a moisturizer that is really strong, give yourself a little bit of time. You know, usually those dissipate after 15 to 30 minutes, but if it's stick around all day, you may want to switch to an unscented one because, yeah, that stuff is just probably overpowering and cheap smelling anyway. I don't have a problem with, you know, even if there's a little 
little bit of a smell from the moisturizer I was using, go ahead and put the fragrance on. It's going to, I think, do it. It's going to cover it up and do, you know, layering like that, I never really see an issue with. So now let's get into the meat of buying fragrances and how to save money, how to make sure you don't overpay. In general, the best deals are going to be online, but the worst return policies are also going to be online. When you go into a box store or you go into, you know, you're going to get the best customer service when you buy directly from a niche perfumer. Why? Because you're going to meet the possibly the perfumer, the guy that actually is putting this whole company together. So you can bet in general, they're going to bend over backwards to make sure that you're happy, get you samples. If you don't like the fragrance, maybe they'll allow you to trade something in versus when you go to one of those discounters online, they pretty much have a no return policy. It may be if you haven't opened it, you know, you haven't sampled it they're going to want to make sure that they get that package just like they sent it. And it's still at their discretion. They could decide not to basically issue you a refund. So be aware of that. And this really comes down to risk versus reward. If you want to take higher risk buying online because you want the higher reward of saving money, well, go for it. And you just got to understand that's the path you're choosing versus going into a shop, going in and, you know, maybe, you know, with a large beauty shop or a box store, they're going to have have some of the most just easiest return policies. You buy something at Walmart, you buy something at Sam's or at Costco, most likely you're going to have a pretty simple return policy. So the first way to buy your fragrances is directly from the manufacturer. The advantage here, you know exactly what you're getting it. When you go and you buy a Chanel fragrance on Chanel's website, you know this is not going to be a counterfeit, that I'm getting the real deal. I'm getting the best of the best. This juice is going to be solid. Yes, they may have reformulated it, but at the end of the day, this is as close to yeah perfection as you can get when it comes to fragrances. Another great thing for the manufacturer is that they maintain the relationship with the consumer. And that's why a lot of companies decide to do this because they realize, hey, if they've got your address, they've got your phone number, they've got your information, they can market directly to you. They can engage with you and they realize that's incredibly valuable. Why don't more companies do that? Because you need to be really strong as a company. You need to have cash reserves. You need to have, in a sense, created that brand that people want it enough that they're going to come after you. Now, there are some companies that are doing this but uh, they're not necessarily as strong of a brand. And that's going to be a lot of YouTubers out there. Why are they selling their fragrances directly to you and not putting them out there in the box stores? Because it's a distribution issue. They don't have the reach. They don't, you know, most distributors, they want you to make a certain number of sales. And, you know, they're not going to put these things on the shelf because they, they know the vast majority of people out there who don't watch YouTube don't know who put out these fragrances, Stephen and Jeremy, by the way. But, uh, you know, that, in my opinion, is the beauty of what these YouTubers are creating is this relationship directly to the consumer. And so you can come in and buy fragrances directly from them. And I think it's actually really good because you know that you're getting the real deal. In addition, there isn't really a middleman. They're able to keep the profit. They're able to keep a lot more money in their pockets, which then they can use to hire teams, to grow the brand and to build up, you know, their little empire. Another great option for buying fragrances, especially if you want something nobody else is wearing, you want a niche fragrance, check out boutiques. Boutiques are going to be smaller stores that specialize in helping these smaller brands distribute themselves. So they're going to bring a whole bunch of them together. They're going to create an online presence or they're going to have a physical store where you can go in and actually smell things. So the House of Creed started off in boutiques. Now they've got their own stores uh, and you can buy, of course, from their website. But point being is initially these higher end, more expensive brands that they realized, okay, people want to smell these things before they're going out and they're spending the money. You'll also see even some smaller YouTubers getting their products into different boutiques out there in the big cities. Uh, but yeah, you know, I think they're still great because sometimes you want to smell a fragrance that, yes, coming from, you know, Creed and you have no idea what it's going to go like. Yes, you could travel to New York and try to go to the Creed store or you can maybe go into a boutique and there's a good chance that they would have the niche fragrance. And I really like supporting small businesses. So if you can go into a boutique or you can find one online, highly recommend you check them out because these are some of the best places to buy. The people are very knowledgeable. You could even sometimes call them up on the phone, send them emails and they'll get back to you with actually very informed responses. Next up, we've got box stores and I'm including everything from duty-free to Walmart to Costco to going up to Nordstrom or even Barney's. 
Point being, these retailers have multiple outlets. They also have huge supply chains. They get a lot of these fragrances. And because of that, they got to liquidate this stuff sometimes. So there are some amazing deals that can be found out there. In general, they've got really tight supply chains. So you're not really going to have counterfeits out there. And if you know what you're looking for, you can find some amazing deals. And over at Walmart or Sam's Club, I'm able to find both of these fragrances for a fair price. Combine that maybe with a discount. Maybe there's a special offer. Maybe you have a gift certificate that you haven't used. All of a sudden, you're able to get these for pennies on the dollar. And don't think it's just inexpensive fragrances. I've been over to the Walmart website, saw the House of Homage being carried over there, and they were discounted heavily. I've also gone over to other websites like Costco, and all of a sudden, you see Creed being sold at a discount. Now, what if you want to find a fragrance that's a little bit newer or a fragrance that's a little bit more exclusive? How are you going to get these at a discount? Well, there are ways, but you're going to have to look probably the higher end box stores. So, Ulta Beauty is a pretty good one. I also like to look at Neiman Marcus. And the tactic I would advise here is, okay, do you have a credit card with that company? That's always a great tactic. You know, you're going to spend a lot of money with this company for a lot of gifts. Go ahead. You got good credit, open up that credit card and you're going to get an instant discount. Doesn't always apply to fragrances, but sometimes it does. Another option here is, are they selling gift cards where you spend a hundred bucks and you actually get $125 or maybe $110 in gift cards? Maybe get on their email list, find a way to get insider information about when they're going to have a deal, when they're going to have a sale. I remember with Ulta Beauty, they were having this deal where you walk into the store and they give you a card and basically it tells you inside how much money you could save on a purchase that day. And guess what? You could use it on anything. It was an in-store credit and uh, I was able to save 25 bucks. And guess what? I picked up a fragrance that day because I had been looking at one and it was right there and I was able to save $25 right off the fragrance. Next up, we've got the discount stores. In my area, we've got TJ Maxx. And when I go to TJ Maxx, what I see is they're trying to liquidate tons of clothing from different brands. In general, though, I think a lot of manufacturers do make for these lower end discounter stores. So I wouldn't say that this was once being sold at like three to four times the price in another store. Sometimes that is the case, but a lot of times they're making it specialty for the store. When it comes to fragrances, I see the usual suspects in there again and again. Now, both these fragrances I think are great. And if you've never smelled them and they have a tester in that store and you like it, go for it. You can find these for, I know, well under 20 20 bucks here in the United States. But in general, I don't always find the best deals. I, again, I see the same thing again and again. And I think if you look online, you can sometimes find a better deal. Next up, we've got fragrance discounters. And I've bought from a lot of these. In my opinion, they're some of the best deals out there because you have so much selection and the prices are usually really good. So my favorite online discounters are going to be Fragrance Net, Fragrance X, Max Aroma, Forever Lux. FragranceBuy.ca and PerfumeClick.com. Now, a lot of you may have heard that the fragrances being sold at these discounters are gray market fragrances. Does that mean they're counterfeits? Does that mean it's illegal? No. It just means that it's a secondary market, that this has been resold a couple times. Example, so let's say Creed uh, sends a whole bunch of fragrances over to a store and that store can move a lot of the fragrances, but they can't move green Irish tweed. It's classic, great fragrance, but for some reason, people aren't buying it. What are they going to do? Because they want to send more fragrances and they want to send more green Irish tweed along with those new fragrances they're coming out with, I don't know, Aventus Cologne or Viking or something. And so they want the new fragrances. Now they got to get rid of this old stuff. What do they do? They actually sell it to a online seller, one of these discounters. They'll take the fragrance. They get it at the price that the retailer initially sold it to that first, you know, vendor and that vendor just resells it. Maybe he doesn't, maybe he loses money on that. But the point is he gets those off his books. He makes room for more fragrances coming in and you get the benefit because guess what? This guy out there has this fragrance that he got for half the price because he bought it, you know, at, at that at lower price and he sells it to you with a smaller markup because he doesn't have this big expensive store. That's the gray market. We see it in cameras. We see it in lots of other items. We also see it in fragrances. To me, it's a great thing because it allows you to get the fragrances you want at a discount. Now, which one of these discounters has the best deal? Unfortunately, it's fluid and it changes. I will say that sometimes I'll find a better deal over at one, but I'll still buy from another discounter because they have a lot faster delivery. I simply like what I can see here. They've got the size I'm looking for. They've got the bottle type I'm looking for. So all those things matter. Now you're also going to see testers out there. And I think that testers are perfectly fine. Now with the tester, oftentimes you're not going to get the fancy lid. So if it's a tester, it may be missing the lid. Uh, it will come in a very plain box. That may be a no, you know, Hey, 
I want the original box. I want everything to look like it should because this thing's going to sit on my shelf. You know, they've got the magnetic cap there. Point being, if you're willing to deal with not getting a lid, with getting in a very plain box, you can oftentimes save 10, 20% on the discounted price as well if you're willing to accept a tester. Now, what about niche suppliers, niche suppliers? However you pronounce that, you guys get the point. These, like the name implies, are going to have fragrances that are hard to find. Fragrances from small houses, from artisans. I've bought from Lucky Sense. Very happy with their customer service, everything I went through with them. I liked it. They sent me tons of samples. That was really cool. But when you're looking for something that's going to be a little bit higher and a little bit probably more expensive, you can't really expect much of a discount. Although sometimes if you get on these guys' email list, which by the way, if you start to buy from somebody, get on their email list. Why? Because they're oftentimes send the best deal that way and I like that I get these email updates. I know when they've got something, they've got limited runs of another thing and they'll let me know and I can go in there and grab it. Now, what about cloned fragrances? Yes, in my opinion, they are perfectly fine as long as you're honest with yourself about what you're getting. This is not the real thing but you know what? It smells just like the real thing and if you own the real thing and you don't want to wear it every day because it's expensive, hundreds of dollars and you want something you can wear every day that smells just like it, well, go for it. I think that's an, a great example but don't try to fool yourself if if you really want this and think you're going to be happy getting this. To me, when you save up the money and you spend and you actually get what you want, that's when actually you have the confidence and you feel, you, you just know on the inside. There's a whole study of science on this talking about confidence and when people buy, you know, counterfeits or they buy something that they know is not real, they never feel good about it because they know that somebody that's in the know would be able to detect it. Although, in my opinion, this one is just a little bit stronger and vast majority of guys I talk to can't even tell the difference. That being said, they're both great fragrances but yeah, don't be afraid to buy a clone if uh, it's going to make you happy. So, what about Amazon? What about eBay? Okay, this fragrance right here I did pick up on Amazon because this is how Lionel Richie said he was going to distribute it. And yes, I am a big Lionel Richie fan. Had to get the fragrance. It's a good one by the way. I mean, it's nothing to write home about. Point being is this is how Lionel wanted to distribute his new fragrances. Very few companies decide to do it that way. They've got their own channels and Amazon is one of the last ones they're going to go on because they really don't have any control and there are so many counterfeits now on Amazon out there. So, if you're looking for a really hard, you know, a brand like Tom Ford, understand that a lot of the Tom Fords on Amazon. I know it sounds crazy but they are fake. A lot of them over on eBay are fake as well. Why? Because this right here sells for hundreds of dollars and it's relatively easy to manufacture something for especially to somebody that doesn't know the difference that looks like this and just put in something that has a smell to it. That's why I don't recommend for the vast majority of people just starting off to buy any fragrances on Amazon or eBay. Now, eBay, you can, if you're smart, look around and you can look at their stars. You can say, okay, they're selling that bottle of Sauvage. It's 50% done. The guy actually has a good story. Hey, this was my father's. He passed away. I all I never liked the fragrance. You know, if you can pick it up, you know, it'll yeah, sell to you. I don't know for forty dollars, fifty dollars. It's halfway used. He's got a good reputation on there. If you really want to take the risk, you're going to get a higher reward. Um, you know, by grabbing a fragrance like this at a discounted price. That being said, you've got to understand that there are many. You know. Un unscrupulous people on eBay who are going to sell counterfeits and they've got all fake stars in there. So, it is something, in my opinion, when you're just starting off with fragrances, be careful buying on eBay or Amazon. And what about the Facebook groups? You know what I'm talking about where you've got people in there buying and selling all these different fragrances. Somebody goes out there and buys a fragrance and says, you know what? I wore it a few times. I don't like it. I want to get rid of it. I'm willing to sell it for 90% the price. I paid for it. So, I think these groups serve a purpose and there's a lot of people doing things in them but I do find they're incredibly inefficient. So, if your time's valuable, you may want to be careful but if you love the idea of the hunt, of finding the right fragrance or you're looking for something that's really niche, something that isn't made anymore and that's actually where eBay is useful, uh, finding these really old fragrances that are, you know, but again, if you're watching, if you are after that, why are you even watching this video? This video is for the guy really starting off and for that reason, I would recommend for most most people, those buy and sell groups, eBay, Amazon, not the best place to buy your first set of fragrances. Now, at this part in the video, I'm going to say some things which are a little bit controversial in the fragrance industry but I feel that they are uncomfortable truths. You ready for them? Number one is that most designer fragrances are actually really solid. I think it is very rare that we have a designer fragrance come out that somebody is going to be repelled by. These designer fragrances are made to sell. 
So you can bet that they're going to hit all the buttons that for the majority of men, you try on one of those fragrances, you're going to get compliments. Somebody is going to like it. Maybe you don't like it, but to understand that the majority of designer fragrances are actually well-made. Now, the second uncomfortable truth, I know a lot of fragrance guys online are going to agree with, but if you work in a department store, you may think, Antonio, that's not very nice. And that is that most people selling fragrances do not know much about fragrances. I'm sorry, but it's just you walk into these stores and the vast majority of the people I speak with have no idea about notes and all the details. That being said, there are some people, especially in the higher end luxury stores or in specific fragrance stores, they know that, I mean, so much more than me. I've only been studying it for a few years, but I've been pretty diligent. I've every single day been trying to dedicate 30 minutes to the craft, but it is something that you get a lot of people who are maybe straight out of college or high school, and they're just selling this as a part-time job, and they don't know anything about fragrance. So be careful about who you listen to. Really, it's best if you educate yourself so that you can make your own decision. The third uncomfortable truth is that everything in fragrances is subjective. Okay, maybe the formulations are objective. But even then, you know, change things up. Every batch could be a little bit different the way they formulate it, the exact percentages. Everything is subjective because as human beings, we, it's like music. Some people like rap, some people like rock, other people like classic. And the same thing with fragrances. You're going to have some people like sheep, sheepers. You're going to have other people like orientals, other people like everything. Some people not like anything except woody, woody fragrances. Guys, so understand when you're listening to someone's opinion, it is just that their opinion. Next up, the price is all about the marketing. Understand that the profit margins on fragrances is incredibly high. That being said, as I talked about that study with the wine earlier, the price has a huge effect on not only how you perceive the fragrance, but when you smell it, what is activated in your brain. Because when you're smelling what you think to be a $500 fragrance versus a $10 fragrance, you just have different expectations and the way that you're smelling it is different. And the fifth uncomfortable truth is that only you can buy the right fragrance for you. You can't get it as a gift. Well, maybe there's a chance that someone could gift you a fragrance that is absolutely amazing and you think is the best for the rest of your life. But for the majority of men, they actually have the ability to be able to put a fragrance on and smell what actually enhances. A lot of guys do not feel com comfortable doing this. They feel that they don't know enough, but guys, trust yourself. Learn a little bit. You don't need to know a whole lot, but you can go out there and make the right decision for you because at the end of the day, you know your needs, you know your wants better than anyone. And when you put on that right fragrance, it's, it's a great experience. Now, if someone were to ask me, what are the notes I expect in an old money type of fragrance, something classic, I would give you seven notes. The first one being citrus. This includes notes like bergamot, lemon, grapefruit. These are going to be invigorating. These are going to be fresh. They just give a feeling of cleanliness. So along that line, I'm going to be recommending two fragrances that at the top have a very nice citrus note. They've been out for a while, so you can even find these at discounters. Check out Dunhill Icon or John Varvatos's Artisan Pure. Now, both of these fragrances are solid summer scents. And as a bonus, both of them come in really cool, unique bottles. Eau Sauvage Flanker that came out in 2017, Parfum. Now, as you can see here, I've made a dent in this bottle. I love this. The Accords are perfect for summer. We've got citrus, aromatic, a fresh, spicy, woody, lavender Accords with a bit of earthy notes. Elegant, modern, fresh, versatile. This is a signature worthy scent that definitely screams old money. Now, straight up, what does it even mean to smell like old money? Well, the term old money refers to a type of sophistication of timelessness that is associated with families or individuals who have maintained their wealth over several generations. An old money man smells established. He's in charge and he isn't going anywhere. So the next old money fragrance on this list is from the House of Chanel. And no, it's not going to be Blue to Chanel, the EDT, the EDP, the Parfum, all of them amazing fragrances, but a bit overused. And it's not going to be Allure Homme Sport O Extreme or anything in the Allure line. Well, gentlemen, I'm going back to Chanel's 1990 your release, Egoist. This is a unique, beautiful, absolute masterpiece. If you want a velvety, woody, spicy floral blend, this is the fragrance you've been looking for. It's timeless, unique, sophisticated, and it's got good longevity. And that takes me to the next two notes we see in a lot of old money fragrances, woods and spices. Now, when we're talking about woody fragrances, we're talking about cedar, sandalwoods, pines, and even vetiver. I know it's a grass, but technically in the fragrance world, it's oftentimes clumped in with woods. Now, with spicy notes in Old Money, I feel it's a little bit trickier. So, over the last hundred years, they have definitely popped up in classic men's fragrances. And for a lot of people, they do send a signal of robustness and strength, but you got to be careful of fragrances that overuse pepper, that overuse cardamom, that use a bit too much cinnamon because it can be overpowered. So, what I recommend Spice Bomb Extreme as an Old Money fragrance, 
fragrance, maybe this is definitely pushing the envelope. But if you want a spicy fragrance that's more wearable during the summer and something that flies under the radar, check out F by Ferragamo. Overall, this is a fresh, spicy, lavender, amber, fruity, leather, aromatic, green fragrance that's been around since 2007 and is a really fresh, clean, with a pepper note. You don't usually get that combination, and that's why I really like this spicy fragrance. And of course, it's got the woods at the base as well. The next set of notes we're going to talk about often associated with a gentleman, green notes, herbaceous notes. These notes include lavender, rosemary, and clary sage. Right off the top, two fragrances that fit this description that are very different from each other. We've got Creed, Green Irish Tweed, and we have Polo Green. So, with Green Irish Tweed, it's been described as an invigorating blast of fresh, clean green. Stunning, masculine, creates a feeling of well-being. Despite being out since 1985, this fragrance does not smell dated and is one of the best old money fragrances on this list. But not to be outdone, we've got Polo Green, released in 1978. If you smell this, you will say, yes, I've smelled this before. Easily one of the best-selling fragrances for men of all time. And a relatively complex fragrance at that. More of a fall and winter fragrance. I know guys that wear this year-round. It is their go-to scent. Actually, a lot of guys. And that's what you're going to notice. It's distinctive. It is definitely a classic, been around, and has that old money smell to it. That being said, if those are too common for you, two lesser known options, Tom Ford's Beau de Jour, released in 2020. What I love about this is this is a modern old money scent that in the Tom Ford line, for some reason, a lot of guys look over. Floris 89, on the other hand, this fragrance is probably one of the oldest ones I'm talking about today. Classic, timeless, and popular with those that read in Fleming. Floris 89 is, uh, yeah, a fragrance that has been around, but nobody seems to know about it, unless you're James Bond fan. And at this point, I just realized that I skipped over vetiver fragrances. When it comes to old money, green, wood, vetiver, however you classify this, this is a classic scent for hundreds of years, probably even longer. Men have been adorning themselves with the smell of vetiver. And there's various types out there, various options when it comes to fragrances, two of the best. You've got perhaps the smoothest vetiver out there in Creed's original vetiver. Let's talk about Not Wilson's Chypre Fluminaire. Now, this is a citrus woody, amber yellow floral, sweet, fresh, spicy, smoky, aromatic fragrance with a bit of leather and those earthy notes. Now, if you love old school, classic men's fragrances, I'm talking fragrance like Aramis and the classic Tom Ford Nure and even Chanel's Antaeus, you are going to love this one. It's not over the top animalistic. No, this is a true sheeper. The mix is beautiful. What really sets it apart is the yang yang being so forward as it is. In a nutshell, it's a beautiful old money type of fragrance that is new, is modern, and no one else is going to be wearing. No man in his right mind needs to have 600 fragrances like me. But yeah, for a regular guy, for a non-fragrance addict, for a guy that just wants to smell good, three fragrances is more than enough, and here's why. Let's start with the Grey Vetiver Parfum from Tom Ford. And by the way, the EDP is just as good, just a little bit weaker. This fragrance right here is the perfect work cologne. Clean, inoffensive, understated, masculine. The accords on this fragrance are going to be aromatic, woody, earthy, a bit of floral with spice and metal. One to three sprays first thing in the morning, it's going to have you smelling good, but not choking anyone out. Now, this next fragrance is not work safe. Sauvage Elixir, this is a fragrance you wear if you want to announce yourself. The accords here are going to be a warm spice mixed in with a wood, with a lavender, cinnamon, and amber. A potent scent with great projection. This is something you wear when you're going out at night. Maybe you want to attract the ladies or just get your partner to get a little bit closer and smell what you're wearing. Now, Yves Saint Laurent's myself, this is the no-brainer, versatile, when I don't know what to wear, I'm going to wear this fragrance. This is perfect for the weekends, when you have a day off, when you just simply want to smell good out of the shower. The main accords here are going to be citrus with a white floral, a patchouli, and a fresh spice with a bit of wood. It's a mass appealing fragrances. The majority of people are going to love it. When you put a little bit more on, you spray a little bit more of this on, especially the first hour, it projects pretty well. And guess what? You're going to get compliments. Now, technically, there's no such thing as a winter fragrance. That being said, as temperatures drop, usually citrus-based fragrances, florals, it's going to be harder for them to project. And as that you want to smell good, you want to turn heads, even if the temperature is below freezing, the trick is to wear a fragrance that has a little bit bit more depth, something that's going to penetrate, something that's going to stick around. First up, we've got Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal Pour Homme Le Parfum. Next up, and sticking with the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier, we've got Le Mall Elixir. Right after that, we've got Paco Rabanne's Invictus Victory Elixir. And another fragrance from the same Spanish house, Paco Rabanne, we've got One Million Royale. And last, but definitely not least, we've got Carolina Herrera's Bad Boy 
extreme. All these fragrances, incredibly strong. We're talking beast mode. These things are going to last. All that being said, I get it. For some of you guys, you don't mind spending a bit more money, especially if you get what you want. You go look at the House of Roja, you look at Elysium. And in case you're wondering, these fragrances are very different, although they share a lot of similarities, but they wouldn't be the ones that I would put at the top of my list if someone were to ask me to recommend one. No, if you were to ask me for one pick that would be aromatic, a bit of sweet, woody, and incredibly versatile, I would recommend Bond Number no. Nine's Scent of Peace for him. Now, the top notes here are pineapple, juniper berry, bergamot. In the middle, current buds. At the base, cedar and vetiver. Came out in 2013. So, you know, it's been a decade since this thing hit the markets. You can still find it if you look around. And what I like about this, it's crisp, it's fresh, it's got great longevity. Now, these next two picks getting us a lot closer to the ocean. You've got Atlantique and you've just got the Pour Homme. Both of these right here are going to have an oceanic vibe. This one, I would say, is going to be more fresh water. This one definitely is going to be more salt water. If you are on a budget, the best fragrance in this category has actually been around, or at least flankers of it, since 1996. So, obviously, I'm talking about Giorgio Armani's Aqua Di Gio. This is one of the most famous fragrances on the planet, and for good reason. This one created its own category and to this day is still a solid pick. That being said, check out the new one. This just came out in the last, I think, uh, two years. It is going to be the Eau de Parfum version and I have to say that it is absolutely beautiful. So, at the top, we've got sea notes and green mandarin. In the middle, clary sage, geranium, and lavender. At the base, we've got mineral notes, vetiver, and patchouli. So, this was a remix of the original by the master Alberto Marias. He's the same guy that did the original and I have to say that he knocked it out of the park. Seriously, if I had to recommend one fragrance on this list right here that is affordable, that so many men would love, this could easily take the cake. Now, if I were to recommend a can't miss fragrance that this one's been around for over 20 years. Yeah, crazy. Burberry Touch. I've talked about this one in some of my older videos and I've came back to it because it is just such a versatile, beautiful, easy to wear fragrance that you can't go wrong with. Is it going to have a lot of distinguishing features? No, but this fragrance right here rocks. The top notes are violet leaf, artemisia, mandarin orange. In the middle, we've got white pepper, cedar, and nutmeg. At the base, white musk, tonka bean, and vetiver. It's smooth, wearable, versatile, and people just love it. That being said, if you want something more modern, check out Dolce & Gabbana's K. This is the Eau de Parfum. Don't go with the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Parfum is where it's at. The top notes on this are going to be blood orange, juniper berry, pimento, lemon, Sicilian lemon, and cardamom. In the middle, we've got fig nectar, lavender, geranium, clary sage, and at the base, cedar, patchouli, vetiver, and cypress oil. Yes, I know I'm cheating here, but this one I think is a bit more masculine than Burberry Touch. Burberry Touch, very unisex. This one just feels, maybe because of the spice, that it's more for a guy. And I do think this one flew under the radar. Sweet fragrances, made to get compliments, made to help you stand out at the club. So, let's start this off with Azara. We have Wanted, Wanted by Night. We've got also the Most Wanted, and then the Most Wanted Parfum. Now, when it comes to a bottle design, Azaro did an excellent job. You've got the whole revolver type of look on these. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful bottles. And I do have to say that for a lot of guys, especially if it's your first fragrance, maybe you've only got a handful, to have a bottle that has a really cool design does have an effect on how you perceive the fragrance, whether or not you're going to like it or not. I know it's superficial, but presentation matters. It gets really confusing. Understand that as the bottle seems to get darker, the juice seems to get sweeter and heavier. I do think Wanted by Night was pretty much the peak. Like this one right here, when it came out, it was an improvement on Wanted. It had just great staying power and it had such really cool notes. I have to say that it was one of my favorites in and is still my favorite in this entire line. That being said, will Wanted by Night be my first choice? Probably not, but it is a great choice. If you already own it or you really like the bottle design or you find it on sale, grab it. It could be a great clubbing fragrance. But let's talk about Eros. Versace's Eros. Now, there are three versions of them. Just stick with the original Eau de Toilette. It gets the job done. If you want something a little bit more refined, you're in your 30s, 40s, then yes, maybe check out the, uh, the Eau de Parfum or the Parfum that just came out. In any case, this one right here really sets the standard for a club 
fragrance. Now, the original Eau de Toilette, this is a modern classic and it is the go-to clubbing fragrance for, unfortunately, a lot of guys. So, understand if you're going to wear this, you're going to get compliments, but you're also going to smell like a lot of other people. Not necessarily a bad thing if it's getting you compliments, if it works and you can find great deals on this because of all the options out there. At the top, we've got that mint with the lemon as we get into the middle there with the green apple, the geranium, and at the base, we've got the tonka bean and the amber. So, what fragrance then is next on my list? Well, I wanted something that's going to put hair on your chest, an animalistic fragrance, one that, yeah, just makes you smell like a man. In that same vein, we've got Dior Fahrenheit. For many men, just the go-to masculine scent. You've got gasoline mixed in with a leather jacket, mixed in with cut in the grass. It's the violet leaf that really gives it that unique smell. Now, I almost went niche here with Naughton and Wilson's Chypre Fulaminaire. This fragrance is really unique with the citrus, with the amber, a bit of woody. You've got floral in there with earthy notes. In fact, now that I'm spraying this here in the office, I feel bad this isn't in my top 10. Maybe I'd give it number 11, but just absolutely beautiful. That being said, if I had to choose one, it would be Terre de Amez's Eau Chivre. This is, of all the 10, this is probably the most recent release. Just came out this last year. And I have to say that it is a masterpiece when it comes to a hot weather fragrance. If it is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, over 40 degrees Celsius, this would be a fragrance that you could pour on. And yeah, you're just going to smell great even though you're sweating. But if you want something with a bit more longevity, with more of an aquatic scent to it, something that is almost magical, check out Versace's Mana Fresh. A citrus aromatic woody fragrance with a bit of fruit. This fragrance has a bit more of an uplifting, energizing, just really friendly and Again, I would say magical, probably one of my favorites in this entire line. The next fall note I want to talk about having to do with harvest is apple. We have a lot of apple orchards in my area. And when I got my nose on apple brandy, I, I haven't had an apple brandy for a decade. And as soon as I smelled this, my mouth started to water. I wanted to, I just don't drink anymore, but this made me want to, oh, it smells freaking amazing. Now, the top notes here are going to be cardamom and bergamot. In the middle, we've got apple, rum, brandy, pineapple, vanilla, and moss. At the base, ambroxan and cedar. Now, don't let that ambroxan turn you off. I actually wish this thing had more moss and ambroxan so it lasted longer. That being said, yeah, if you can afford it, if you want a fragrance that's intoxicating, ooh, yeah. I also want to give a quick shout out to Gold Knight. I love this one for the honey and the vanilla, but the citrus on the top does make this, I think, a fall fragrance, although you can wear it in the winter. But uh, yeah, cozy, not for everybody. Definitely get your nose on this or have the money to be able to afford the blind buy. Now, the fragrance I'm wearing today has perhaps the weirdest name on this entire list, and that is Valentino Umo's Born in Roma Yellow Dream. Now, one thing I do like about this fragrance is in the Born in Roma line, it's actually easy to identify. And when it comes to wearing it, it's warm, it's fruity, and it's not overly spicy. Now, at the top, we've got pineapple and mandarin orange. In the middle, ginger, gingerbread, and spices. And at the base, vanilla absolute and cedar essence. Now, with the gingerbread, which is prominent, I definitely probably could have made this a winter fragrance, but I decided, you know, to put it on this list because, hey, you can have it a little bit early. You can wear it into the winter. Uh, it's not overpowered. It's not too heavy. You can wear this on a little bit, you know, 70 degrees outside, 60 degrees outside. You definitely can wear this fragrance. All right, gentlemen, so what video to watch next? How about my 10 out of 10 picks. These fragrances are absolute masterpieces. Wondering what I'm talking about? Check it out. Uh, I cover quite a few fragrances. Fragrances that, yes, are just, I mean, yeah, as you can tell, I love fragrances. So, if you like these type of videos, keep watching. Boom. Don't stop. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Boom. It's a good video. Check it out.